so good afternoon everyone actually this was the talk when i was making i really learned a lot so because i went through the document which i never read and it gave me lots of learning and i hope that all of you will enjoy and learn something because trials are very fascinating for all the clinicians everyone want to do trials because you know it gives you some enthusiasm and you also feel that it will be published in some good journal so we should know at least the basic rules of trials and that is what we are going to discuss today and let me disclose that whatever i will talk it is based on my experience and little bit of reading and don't take it as a comprehensive document that everything related to trial has been covered so please go through the icmr guideline which have much more component available free of cost in the website and i have never worked as a ethic committee member also so at place i may be wrong dr vinita will correct me if i am wrong at places so in simple term what is ethics related to trial or anything i will say it is honesty morality and consciousness it is these are the abstract thing they are not something which is physical and simply how to define if you are in dilemma and not sure are you ethically correct or incorrect you ask a question from yourself will you accept it as a trial participant and if your answer is yes i can bet you most of the time your decision will be ethically correct this is the simple way to decide about ethics you ask the question whether my participation is voluntarily whether i was given informed information about the implication about the possible treatment about the adverse effect about my number of visit needed about the cost all those things so this is the simplest way to define whether you are ethically correct or not because many time even if you go through the entire document you will be not able to decide at every position what is ethically correct so these are the few important aspect of trial which i will cover one by one so by definition a clinical trial is in any research or study that prospectively assign human participant to one or more health related intervention so animal trial can also be there because we are dealing with the human ethics so that's why here we have the assignment of human participant to one or more health related intervention and to evaluate the effect of intervention on outcome the important message which i want to give is the outcome could be simply like survival it can be like discomfort means improvement in discomfort or any other outcome cure it can be ease of administration could also be a outcome that some drug you are giving orally and another you are giving iv so which one can be given easily it can also be a trial financial burden on the patient or the society or the government whosoever is the payer time saving could also be an outcome that one treatment is completed in 3 days other completed in 5 days and quality of life especially i have written this quality of life because many time this is one of the instrument which we use which is simply based on the questionnaire and we don't count it as a trial but even assessment of effect of your intervention on quality of life should be counted as a trial so the crux of any trial is assignment to the treatment arm is decided by the trialist not by the patient so if you have two possible treatment a and b patient has no right and option to choose between a or b it is the trialist who is going to decide that which treatment he will get whether patient is knowing it or not knowing is a different issue it may be open label it can be closed it can be blinded if the patient knows what treatment he is getting it will be open label trial if patient does not know what trial what treatment he is getting it will be a blinded trial but which treatment he can get is not decided by the participant it is by the trialist that is the most important point in trial so there are many phases of trial from 0 to 4 just i will summarize briefly about them 
one by one, which must be known. Phase zero trial means if we know any drug, especially works through some receptor or some uh, pathway in the body. So the objective of phase zero trial is to know whether the drug or the intervention we have given is working through the supposed mechanism of action or not. It is working on the receptor it's on which it is supposed to work or it is working on the pathways on which it is supposed to work. Our, we, do, we are not interested to know the effect in the patient. And that is why we select very few participants. It has no therapeutic uh, uh, diagnostic intention. And we uh, even not interested about the distribution of drug. And because we are knowing the, trying to know the effect of drug on the receptor or the pathway. So a small dose of drug, first time you are using for safety concern also we are using in lower doses. Then the phase one trial, Major objective of phase one trial is to, two objective, one to identify the major means life threatening adverse effect related to drug. And second objective is to study the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetics of the study. That what is the distribution, what is the serum drug level, how long, what is the T half and how many T half, what is the, uh, metabolism kinetic, whether it is T0, zero order kinetics or one order kinetics or two order kinetics. So all those things are studies in phase one trial. And most of the time we take healthy participant, but in case if drug or intervention is toxic or injurious, then we can take affected patient who are not left with other option. Like if we are trying to do uh, cholecystectomy, then obviously we will not do a healthy person. No? Somebody who need cholecystectomy can be taken in intervention only. So very small number of participants and most of the time it is done in uh, ICU setting so that any life threatening adverse effect can immediately be managed and we should have insurance policy in place to manage and bear the cost of all the expenses related to management of complications. Phase two trial, its primary objective is to identify the dose finding. How much dose is to be given? Dose response relationship, whether when we are increasing the dose, whether the response is increasing or not, and how much it is effective. But we are not comparing with the gold standard. So relatively larger number of patients a participant we take, many times healthy participant, many times affected patients, and they are constituting of several homogeneous groups. So we can see the pharmacodynamic, pharmacokinetic. Suppose if you are taking a drug which is metabolized by liver and excreted by kidney. So we will like to take at least three group of participant, one healthy, one patient with liver disease, one patient with kidney disease. At least three group we should take and preferably if possible then children also so that we can understand the metabolism and pharmacokinetics in children. Similarly in pregnant women, old age. So different groups of population which are likely to be affected in different way or the metabolism may different in that population that has to be taken and that is why the sample size has gone to 200 so that even 20, 30 participants included in one group you will have five, six, seven groups. Phase three trial, it is a standard technically all the trial what we are doing in academic setting like in SGPGI. We are typically doing phase three trial. We are hardly doing any phase one study or phase two study, right? Where we are comparing the intervention with the standard of care or the gold standard. The objective of doing a trial Maybe to repurposing of the drug means using a pre-existing drug for a new indication in new dose, dose may be higher or lower, different duration, different route of administration, different form of medicine means drug was earlier available in injectable form. Now we want to try the oral form 
versus injectable form. That is also a phase three trial, right? So like azithromycin, which typically used for bacterial infection was used in COVID, that will be a phase three trial, a new indication of the drug. Phase four is primarily a post-marketing surveillance for the established indication approved by DCGI. And basically we want to know the long-term effect of use of drug in large population. When the millions of population have used and whether it has some side effect which could not be recognized in usual phase three trial where most of the time you have 600, 700 or 800 population as participant. Like some of the drug, rofecoxib, where the increase rate of MIE, all those things. For uh, COVID vaccine, you have seen thrombocytopenia, IC bleed, venous thrombosis, coronary artery thrombosis. So all those things will be phase four trial sort of history. So now that was the background. And now what type of intervention or clinical trial we do here? It's preventive to prevent a disease, to diagnose a disease or to treat a disease. And intervention could be a medication, a drug. Psychological intervention can also be there. Can you give any example of some psychological intervention? Anyone? Placebo, no. psychological intervention. That is an intervention arm. What is a psychological intervention? Some example. Uh, use the speaker, please. You can use mic. Yes, cognitive behavior therapy and another thing like simple clinical term. A gallstone disease patient, you have counseled one group to go for annual ultrasound to look for the progression of disease. And another group, you have not counseled about the advantage and disadvantage and just, just advised that you do ultrasound annually. So you can see how much the adherence improves or adherence reduces. Or say in our disease like chronic hep B where lifelong treatment or follow-up is needed, if I counsel the patient about the implication of adherence to the therapy benefit, probably there are more chances that patient will adhere for long term. So for clinical point of view, adherence to the therapy is an important outcome where the psychological intervention you may use. In psychiatry, obviously, most of the other than pharmacology and some uh, neurotactic therapies, etc. Uh, psychiatric intervention may though counseling is important. Health education, health promotion activity, regular exercise, healthy diet, fruit intake, fiber intake. So all those, anything can be the intervention. Radiation safety, vaccine, surgical device. These are the known things. So just I'm highlighting few things which many times we fail to understand that this can also be an intervention. So intervention can also be like established intervention, which is known, but there is no scientific data for that. Many drugs which are in use for a long time, like any liver patient with derange LFT are getting UDCA. But what is the evidence? So we can still do a trial on use of ursodeoxycholic acid in patient with derange LFT because we don't have a strong evidence. But drug is in use. Establish intervention for a new purpose that already we have spoke. The drug is very established for some other indication and we are trying it for a new indication. So type of intervention can be withholding an established intervention can also be an intervention. You are getting my point or not? Some There is some standard of care like those with fatty liver disease should do regular physical activity. Somebody is practicing it, but my intervention is that you stop physical activity. That is also an intervention, a negative intervention, but again, stopping or discontinuation of established therapy is also an intervention. Altered administration already we have discussed, change in method of delivering, such as DOTS, means there could be two way. We have given the drug, 
he will take a room and eat there or the person has to come to the treatment center and take therapy directly observe therapy for tuberculosis that is also an intervention and a study of intervention previously untested in human so any type of intervention can be there so the trials if you see there are two type of trials one is academic trial which is also called as investigator initiated trial which we are doing most of the time which is funded by the your own resources or by the institute through internal funding or you, that is funded by external funding by icmr dbt dst or upcsd or anybody else those are the investigator initiated trials those are known as academic trials there can be non academic trial which is initiated by industry pharma so that is a non academic clinical trial for any drug approval and registration in the country we always need a non academic trial even if we have data from 10 academic trial for registration of a drug we always need a non academic trial industry sponsored trial so it is a clinical trial will refer to systemic study of new drug so new drug trial can only be done by industry not as a investigator initiated for academic clinical trial we can do only approved drug for any other indication it's fine but drug has to be approved when we are doing a academic trial then investigator has two responsibility one is the responsibility of pi and second is the investigator responsibility of sponsor so here most of the time sponsor is your institute because the, our ethics committee has approved and institute has funded the trial so institute will be the sponsor otherwise the pi will be the responsible person for what is responsible sponsor basically responsibility of pi is that your trial is done ethically participant were recruited ethically all the rules of ethics was followed data safety was taken care of data is not fudged it is not fabricated and analysis was done in real data right and the sponsor responsibility is related to, to the adverse effect injuries compensation so all those responsibility also lies with pi if it is an academic trial and that is why new drug trials is usually not done as a non academic trial because where how you will pay the compensation if your institute has mechanism to pay compensation etc then you can go ahead otherwise you will not be able to do it. so what are the ethical aspect related to any trial when we are doing when we are designing one is a equal voice of evidence what is equal voice of evidence we need to understand it so what is equal voice of evidence anyone batao batao so there is Rather than those other things, certain diet, certain diet, certain some medication. So, equal points of evidence means there are evidences for the medicine and against the medicine. We are not sure what is the evidence. So, many times when we are trying designing a trial, we ignore the results which were not favorable or which were less favorable, so that our trial is approved that we can do it. Right, and the other problem is those trials which have negative results, they will issue a publication bar. They are not published, and you don't have access to the data. Also, but if there is clear cut evidence that the drug has definite a positive effect or a definite negative effect, then doing the trial is ethically not right. It is unethical because again. You ask the question: Do I agree to participate as a trial participant or not? If I, your doctor knows that there is clear cut evidence that this drug is useful, 
and you are randomized to a control arm, will you accept it as a participant or not? So, whenever answer is no, most likely you are going against it. So, that is a huge point of evidence. As I said, for sample size recognition, this is one of the another mistake which we do. Not only you, I, but I have seen big people also doing this mistake. And I would request we should try to not do this mistake. To get a sample size, sample size is what, what you are giving to the computer, the computer is giving to another. So sample size also is dependent on your input. And to get a sample size, which study can be completed in your tenure of three year, one and a half year, or six months time, don't distort your assumption. So, assumption should be evidence based, that what literature is. If you assume that drug A is 50% effective and drug B is 90% effective, your sample size will be small. But if you say that drug A is 50% effective, drug B is 60% effective, then your sample size is very large. So you feel that this much patient I cannot recruit, so let us increase the difference. That is very, very important and is done in many trial combination group journals. So your assumption should be based on real data, which has been published and accepted. Even if you publish this kind of result, People will not accept your data because your assumption was wrong. When you start to believe, the result will also be wrong. Garbage in, garbage out. What's the advantage? And ethics approval before the start of trial, especially for trials, the observational study, we start to believe, it goes. It goes. It doesn't matter. Trial is very important. Ethics approval should be taken because if there is any Court case, any complaint, then nobody can say it. Nobody can say it. PI is gone. So it's better to not start a trial instead of doing a trial before taking ethic approval. And there should not be any financial burden on the participant. Many times we think that the financial burden is related to the cash expenditure. So we are not asking for any extra investigation. That is not only financial expenditure. If you have asked for one extra visit to the hospital for your study, he has to leave one day of wages. He has to spend for travel. He has to spend for staying at night. And most of the time, one patient is occupied by another person. So entire expenditure. So the, there should not be any additional burden related to travel, which they food. Any investigation, medication, and loss of it. See, this we have to see. This is the point which is most murky because I know if we follow everything, we cannot be do any trial. So, at least we should try to see that how much we can minimize these expenditures. Or if we are spending some extra money to travel to our center, how we can facilitate him? At least he should not wait in the field. He can be immediately seen, he can be seen on the off hour so that he can come to the hospital after doing his job. So his wages is not last. Something, what extra can we do some investigation free of cost for him? Some additional investigation which is needed for his care and we are doing free of cost. Something we can do at least. So this is where we have to apply our brain. Use of placebo, it is acceptable if there is no established therapy. Then you can use placebo, but you cannot use placebo if there is effective therapy. Like in present era, we have very effective therapy for hepatitis C virus. We cannot do a placebo control trial because a person who is effective is eligible for treatment. Treatment is available to your cost. He is willing to take, but why do you on placebo? So initial studies were fine when placebo control trial was, but now we cannot do. And withholding standard of care. If you are doing giving placebo, that means you are stopping the standard of care. 
So withholding a standard of care should not expose participant to serious harm, but may cause temporary discomfort or delay in relief of symptom. Typically like you are comparing some analgesic with placebo. Right. So here you can use placebo because you know this analgesic effect is going to last for 12 hours and you can give analgesic after 12 hours. Or after 4 hours you will see there is improvement or not and then you can change the arm. So there is some delay after counseling you can say you may have to suffer from the pain for some time, 6 hours, 4 hours extra and then you can use placebo. If the disease is self-limited, then you can use placebo because anyway it will improve. And if use of a standard of care as a comparator would not yield scientifically reliable result, and the use of placebo would not add any additional risk. The standard of care will affect your outcome, and placebo will not give any benefit. Or it will not affect your outcome. So about placebo use for it. It's not that you can use everywhere. In a multicentric trial, this is an important point which we miss many times. The study has to be cleared from every center separately. And every center is entire, entitled to start a study after obtaining clearance from their center. So if you have 10 centers, 10 centers might be starting a study on different dates because they will be getting easy clearance on different dates. It note that the PA has got the clearance. And everyone can start the trial because the responsibility lies with the site PI. If SGPGI is a center in a multicentric study, if anything goes wrong, any court case, anything happens, any patient dies, then the responsibility lies with the site PI, not with the main PI. Because as the ethic committee, implicated will be of SGPGI ethic committee because they have given the this. Obligation will lie with SGPGI. So just same thing I want to depict here that if I am a PIA, I have four centers. So every site has to take a clearance. Safety monitoring. For any every trial, there are many types of safety which has to be monitored. Ethical safety is one thing, which is taken care by the ethic committee. Data safety is another thing which is taken care by the data safety monitoring board. BCA approval of the drug for the new drug is for trial. BCA approval means BCA ensure that what drug you are going to use is safe for human use and it is manufactured as per the standard guidelines in a unit which is approved for such preparation. It is not like I collaborated with the local pharma people and got the drug manufacturing. Right, so that is the approval is important. If you are doing some animal trial, the animal ethic committee clearance, radiation safety committee. If you are doing some radiation related trial, biosafety, any infective material, genetics. Uh, if you are doing some genetics study, then they have another committee through which approval. So depending upon the content of your trial, different type of approval you need. So you may need many approval for a single trial. And you have to start after obtaining all kinds of clearance. So data safety monitoring board, this is very important thing. Why I brought this issue here? Because when you read good journal, when I said any genetics they always write that the data was monitored by data safety monitoring board. If your data was monitored by data safety monitoring board, the quality of your publication is considered to be excellent. And then you're likely to be published in a better way. We don't have data safety monitoring board in our institutions, unfortunately. So every trial data has got to be monitored by data safety monitoring board. This it will be committee of independent people of scientific area and different backgrounds from the city or some other places, and they will have access to your data. They can check your data. If today you had entered patient name XYZ and tomorrow you have changed it to ABC, they will check it because they have all the access to your data. And any modification, you have to submit your report to them, take their approval, and only then you can move forward. 
If they say no, you cannot continue your study, you cannot go forward. You have to stop your study. So, data safety monitoring board DC uh, MB is required primarily for the trials as mandatory, where the outcome is very major, very major outcome. Improvement is fever is not a major outcome, but survival is a major outcome. Where the prevention of a serious disease progression, that is the where means the outcome is very big. It can affect the survival and life, reduce the risk of a major adverse. So positive will be the disease progression getting is likely to reduce the major adverse. These kind of studies, if your outcome measure is, then you need data safety monitoring board. Means the primary outcome, not the secondary outcome. Same thing I have written here in more detail. So research related injury, when the participant is recruited, given drug intervention, investigation, anything, the participant may come across with some of the injuries which can be expected or unexpected adverse effect. Expected means the adverse effects which were known in literature. And there can be some adverse effects which were not related, but can be explained considering the pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, metabolism of the drug and the possible actions. So those are the unexpected. Suppose there is some drug which is uh, not metabolized in the body and excreted as such in the urine, but some patient has developed cholestatic jaundice, has developed jaundice. There is a possibility that the drug might have interacted with some of the receptors in the liver and has caused jaundice. So that is an unexpected outcome, but it's still an injury. Serious adverse event related to intervention. What is serious? I will come forward about it. New medical injury related to procedure. So these are the adverse effects which are considered serious. So there are actually entire guidelines, good medical practice guidelines, in which each and every side effect is graded, mild, moderate, or serious. Especially simplest side effect is nausea. So how you will say that this nausea was mild or moderate or severe? It is there. We have to use those sort of words for every trial to grade your adversity. So life-threatening injury, prolongation of hospitalization, significant disability or incapacity means the drug was given to treat cirrhosis. Now patient has developed blindness. It is a significant disability related to drug. So patient is liable to get compensation. Requirement of intervention to prevent permanent injury or damage means he needed prolonged hospitalization, he needed blood transfusion, he needed additional surgery, he needed to stay in ICU, all these things are the serious adverse effect. And every serious adverse effect has to be reported within 24 hours. First information to the ethics committee, concerned ethics committee has to be given within 24 hours. It can be given by telephone, by email, by in writing, whatever way. But detailed written report has to be submitted within two weeks. First information within 24 hours. So you cannot say it was a holiday, so I cannot give you the information. You can give email, uh, drop an email in ethics email address that this adverse effect has been reported in this patient at this date and time. Detailed report will follow. And we have to ensure the free medical management of adverse effect, in particular, serious adverse effect for that and compensation. So that is why we need insurance or some compensatory mechanism. So whenever it is an industry sponsored trial, then industry take an insurance. Uh, Umbrella insurance, say 100 crore rupees, they have taken insurance and they will pay premium for that. And whichever center develop any injury and compensation has to be paid, will be paid through that insurance. That is the most common way. But for investigator initiative trial, 
ID Institute should have taken an umbrella insurance and the PI responsibility should be that every trial before you start it should be enrolled in that registry so that you, your patient is entitled to take benefit of compensation if needed and PI is saved. Because one single compensation can take our entire life salary. So these are the other regulatory bodies in the country where you need approval and other guidelines which we should read. But as you grow and you do big and big trial, you will come across with all these guidelines. Interim analysis. Interim analysis means when you're, you have completed, a, you have recruited a substantial number of participants in your trials, and then you analyze your data, submit the report to Data Safety Monitoring Board and Ethics Committee, and take their approval to continue the trial. And if they approve, then you can continue. So it is not needed in all the cases. It is basically when outcome is something very serious either in positive direction or in negative direction. The outcome may be very good effect or it could be very bad side effect. So if you are expecting some this kind of outcome, then interim analysis is important so that unexpectedly large number of participants are not exposed to the adverse effect or unexpectedly large number of the participants are not, uh, you can say, devoid of uh, given treatment or intervention. So interim analysis, most of the time it is done when 25% to 50% of the participant are recruited and their follow-up is completed. Dishonesty is in intervention trial when we are doing, because we are willing to get a positive result. Whenever we are doing dishonesty with our trial result, please think that your mistake is not going to affect your paper only. It will affect the patient, not only the patient who was recruited, but the patient in the world anywhere because your result may be applied. Other researchers, image of the institute, image of the department, and image of the country. If one researcher has done something wrong, his name is blacklisted, it is not the author. It is usually the institute. That wo institute ke log to galat data dete hai. Wo to chori ka data dete hai. So entire institute from people who are doing good work in other department, they will also suffer. So please think about all these things before manipulating your data. It's better to not publish instead of publishing around data. And these are the few requirements which I feel that we must know and we should not miss because many people don't know that every trial has to be registered in CTRI. In addition, you can register in any other registry also. There are total six registries in the world. So you can register in other registry also, but CTRI registration is mandatory. There are standard reporting guidelines for trials which you have to follow, consort diagram. Role of funder has to be very clear what they have funded. Have they funded for the intervention? Have they funded for the manpower, for the consumable, what they have funded? And do they had access to the data? Who has analyzed the data? How much control they had on the data? So all these things is very clear and we need to write in the paper, conflict of interest and data safety monitoring board. So in summary, Participants are assigned to a group by the researcher in a trial. So as I told in the first slide, ask yourself whether I am satisfied as a trial participant. If answer is yes, most of the time you are ethically correct. Be honest while planning your study in context of sample size and equipoise of evidence. And do not forget to register in CTRI and follow up, take other clearances because ultimately the goal of any intervention, any trial is to get a good publication. And if it is not published, then nobody will accept also your data, your result. So think the impact of your result before deviating from the ethics. Thank you.